Hey guys, welcome to Engineering Academy after a long time. And in this video, we will talk about stock cell analysis and stock cell design. What are these and how they are used in civil engineering? So let's start. Have you ever wondered how engineers ensure that buildings, breezes, and other structures are safe and reliable? Today we'll see how engineers do it. So let's start with the structure analysis. To describe structure analysis, I'll use an example of a simply supported beam. So let me draw a beam. So I'll draw a beam like this and it has got a hinge support at one end and a roller support at the other end. Let's say that the span of this beam is the span of this beam is L and there is a point load at the center of the beam. The value of the point load is W. Okay. Let's assume that this beam does not have any self weight. Okay. So in that case, when there is no load, when there is no W acting on this beam, in that case, nothing happens, right? But once you apply the load, what happens? The structure reacts to it and it generates internal forces. So it gives reaction at the supports as well. We, you must be aware of the reactions. For example, what we say is that at the hinge support, there are two reactions. One is upward and one is the horizontal. And at the roller support, there is only one reaction and that is the upward reaction. Okay. And why two two reactions at the hinge and uh, why only one reaction at the roller that you must be knowing if you don't know please comment and i'll write the answer so apart for, from these support reactions the uh, the beam itself undergoes the internal reaction the two prominent internal reactions that i want to discuss is one is the shear force shear force and the other is the bending moment The bending moment so I have said that the shear force is the internal force so what does that exactly mean so if you take this beam over here as an example and uh, let's assume that and let's assume that you break the beam at this point okay at a random point and now you see it let me draw a 3d view of this beam so it will so it will look something like this. So this is the face. I just want to show you the section, the cross section of this beam. So this is the cross section of the beam. This over here, it is the cross section. Okay. So what happens is that when you apply the load W and internal forces, the load W is in the downward directions. So to resist that force, the internal forces in the upward direction will be, will be developed on the cross section of this beam on the cross section okay on this face of this beam the face the cross sectional face of this beam and those forces they try to hold the beam together and that we call as the shear force all right so next uh, we have the bending moment when the load w is applied this beam bends like this okay this beam bends like this over here and after a certain time it stops bending so what it is doing it is trying to resist the bending action of this beam of this load so when there is no load the beam is straight when the load w is applied the beam bends like this and it resists the bending action so if if it cannot resist the bending action the beam will fail but if it can resist the bending action the beam will not fail but it will have a bend shape and this resisting action of this beam is due to the bending moment so why the bending moment is generated because it resists the bending action of the load 
okay so this is also an internal reaction and we normally represent the shear force for example if this is my section of this beam we represent the shear force like this and the bending moment like this that you must have studied so one other prominent thing that i have to mention is the deflection so let's say that this is the original position of the beam and after the load w is applied this is the final position of the beam and this over here let's say delta this we call as the deflection and it is generally measured in millimeters that is mm so why i am explaining these things the primary purpose of the structure analysis is to determine the shear force the bending moment and the deflection due to the external load so w over here this is my external load and the reactions to this external load are the shear force bending moment and the deflection there are other things such as strain stress so that also come from these things okay so when you are doing the structure analysis of this beam what you do is that you have this external load right then you determine the shear force and then you determine the bending moment so normally for the shear force and the bending moment what we do is we determine the shear force and the bending moment over the span and we call them we call it as the bending moment diagram and also the shear force diagram okay so for example for this simply supported beam over here beam over here with load w and span l now what we do is that using our techniques using our mathematical calculations we determine the shear force over the span of the beam and how we represent because this is a simple example and you must have done it so the shear force diagram looks like looks like this isn't it this is my plus this is my minus shear force positive shear force and the negative shear force similarly the bending moment diagram the bending moment diagram it looks like this plus over here okay it goes here right so why i do the bending moment diagram and the shear force diagram so this is w by 2 this is wl by 4 okay the my main point is i have to determine the maximum shear force in this whole beam and i have to determine the maximum bending moment in this whole beam so from here i can say that i can say that the maximum shear force is acting over the span of the beam and the value is w by 2 and the maximum bending moment is acting at the center of the beam and the value is wl by 4 now i have determined my maximum values once you have determined the shear force and the bending moment the structural analysis is complete structural analysis part is complete okay you have done your job so you have analyzed this structure so from this example we can see that structure analysis is the process of determining how a structure responds to loads and forces this includes understanding how the structure will behave under different conditions such as the weight of the building material the occupancy load the wind earthquake and other external forces over here i have considered w as the external force and it can be the dead load it can be the live load and if the load is let's say wind load or the earthquake load then it will be the horizontal load because we say that wind load and the earthquake load they are the lateral loads so we'll talk about the loads in detail in another topic in another video okay so by doing the structure analysis you have found the maximum forces and also you have found the point where that maximum internal reaction is being applied for example over here it's the mid span of the beam so now you know that you have to give emphasis on the mid span of the beam because over here the maximum bending moment is being applied using the structure analysis you have found these things and but your job is not done yet the goal of an engineer is to ensure that the structure can withstand these loads without failure the, these loads means this w load over here 
so when you apply over this beam the beam shouldn't fail and you have to ensure this then how you ensure it you ensure it you ensure it using the concept of structural structural design so using these values over here that you have received and using different codes depending on the country for example if you are using this for the rcc and you are in in the, in the region where indian codes are followed then you use is 456 2000 for the designing of the beam and the column and similarly if the earthquake loads are involved you have to use the code that follows the earthquake load so what you do next is you have to determine the cross section of this beam cross section of this beam that can withstand this load and that you do using the concept of the structural design so what does the cross section means so this is the beam over here this is my 3d beam okay this i say this is my length from here up to here this i say this is my breadth and from here to here this i say this is my height b length breadth and height so normally the length of the beam is already determined how for example if this is your room over here this is the room and the client says that his requirement is he needs a room that is 10 feet by 12 feet this is my 10 feet let's say and this is 12 feet okay this is fixed which means that the length of this beam is fixed let's say it is 12 feet or length of this beam is fixed that is let's say is 10 feet now your job is to find the breadth and the height so that you use that you do using the structural design okay so you have found the section size this b and h we call as the section size and the other thing that you also have to find is the reinforcement in the beam that you have to apply the reinforcement can be of two types if this is your beam over here i'm if this is your beam over here i'm showing you the side view this view over here the reinforcement that runs from one end to the other end from let's say if these four are the columns and the reinforcement that goes all the way all the way to on the length of the beam all the way like this okay this reinforcement we call it as the longitudinal reinforcement and this reinforcement resists the bending moment okay and the other is the lateral reinforcement that goes like this the vertical and this resists the shear force this resists the shear force okay so longitudinal reinforcement and the lateral reinforcement and this you also have to determine so how many numbers of the rebars what is the size of the rebar what is the spacing of the rebar that you have to do and that we do in the structural design so basically structural design involves selecting the appropriate materials determining the dimensions of the structural component determining the reinforcement determining the structural components determining the material and ensuring that the design meets all the relevant building codes and the standard so basically in the structural design engineers engineers take the results from the structural analysis and use them to develop a safe and economical design safe that withstands the external load and economical that is not that is not unnecessary in size this includes specifying the size and shape of each structural element as well as the materials materials to be used while structural analysis focuses on understanding how loads affect a structure structural design is about applying that knowledge 
to create practical and safe buildings and infrastructures. Together, these two processes ensure that our built environment is safe, functional and resilient. Whether it's a skyscraper, a bridge or a residential home, structure analysis and design are the cornerstones of modern engineering. Alright guys, so this much for this video. I hope the concept is clear. Thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in the next video.